Dear friends of the best reality simulation game in the world, it's time again for Station News News. It's 2024, June the 17th. And uh, today I will not show you things that we have uh, new in the game, but instead I will talk about what the developers have told us. They said uh, the next tutorial, the next update will be tutorial focused. So looks like we are not going to be bringing back the old ones. So good, I just made a um, 25 minute video which uh, shows all the old tutorials in a compressed format. Uh, they are not going to bring uh, back the old ones because the code that triggers events is well and truly broken. The aim is to do something less handholdy, basically a couple of chains of objectives hints for when you're playing your first game, similar to what Oxygen Not Included has. We think this is a good compromise for helping get players into the game. Once we have that system working well and integrated properly into the we into the game, we may take another look at teaching the very basic, uh, like uh, the first three tutorials. And also start thinking about ways to help teach more advanced concepts like filtration, cooling, phase change, solar tracking, IC, etc. A core pillar for this work is that it is as easily maintainable as possible. We don't want to end up in the same position as last time when someone has to spend a week playtesting and fixing the tutorials every time we push out a patch. Part of the issue with the old tutorials was trying to make sure the player did exactly the right thing as a lot of, uh, a lot of effort went into locking down everything to prevent the player from interacting with the game, really fighting what the game is. If we have a more freeform disconnected approach, we don't build fragile chains of required actions that can easily break. It would be more like first build a uh, build uh, and power an autolith, smell some iron into the arc furnace, Build an, a furnace, smell some steel in the furnace. We want to provide a loose frame to help a new player know what they should be aiming for to progress. So that's what's ahead in the next big update. Um, we haven't seen anything of that yet on the beta channel because that announcement was today. So that's what that could look like, I guess. Huh. Oh, achievement unlocked. Oh, what, what now? Um, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's a bit very detailed, but if that's the way you want to play it, then, uh, is that right? Uh huh. And now what? Yeah, and so forth. I don't think that's what they have in mind. I mean, uh, this is a bit too detailed and comes down once again to do this thing in, ex in exactly this order. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Well, and the developers have announced for this year that they will uh, refactor the terrain. So we will have a finite world, uh, not round like here in Astronia. Um, but uh, you will have reason to travel and there will probably be landmarks and such. It will be very interesting. A few square kilometers is what we are about to get. So Dean said about that about a month ago, the plan is to make the worlds a defined size. Then we can make the resolution of the boxes much finer, more performant and a lot of the things we... Uh, and a lot of other things. We can then hand author and allow models to as well. World's better, uh, place deep vein ores for miners, etc. So the terrain will look far better, more like, say, space engineer boxes, as well as being much faster. And we can properly balance the worlds and ensure the actu they actually work. We can improve performance dramatically for things like storms. So that's what's coming later this year. The other staff are preparing for the next major update, which will be survival, and then after that will likely be a power update that is planned to include nuclear reactors. Shown here, Nuclearis on Steam. Uh, somewhere in the middle will be a refactor of the terrain system, a complete rework. The prototype has been done and prepared and will be integrated once Simon is back. Nuclear power is probably one of the easiest parts of our planned work, really. 
Uh, all the core systems needed are done, but we need a reason for it, that's the harder issue. And we might want in-world water again to make it work better. Some of you might know, um, and I actually myself didn't see it yet, um, Stationers had uh, standing water in the world at one point, but only tiny amounts. If it was more than the simulation would bend its knee. <laughs> Uh, Station is finally kind of stable. The key thing for me is to rip out the terrain system and replace, get an orbital instance going for every map that gets some cool in-world opportunity for travel to from planet surface within the same game. Nuclear power is another one, but I'd like us to do in-world water before we do that if possible. So nuclear reactors are definitely coming. So another thing that's definitely ahead but was put on the back burner for now. Uh, during this year they started working on new suits. Let's see what they said. Our current work goal is adding depth and polish to the survival gameplay. We are currently working on a rework of the suits and jetpacks. Two, uh, two <laughs> to three new suits, a redesign of how the thermodynamic and cooling work in the current suits as well. Our design pillar with the new suits is to provide meaningful choices to the player around which suit to use. Ideally you will end up maintaining at least two suits for different purposes. Different players may end up having their favorite suit jetpack combo, but the aim is that not everyone's favorite will be the same. We're also working on the revamp of the starting conditions. This okay, we know that already. This involves an immersive start sequence and a low level rework on how we author the start conditions. Yeah, that has happened also. For each planet, so we can have better control over what player spawns what, over what the player spawns with, what subsequent players spawns, uh, spawn with, and what respawning playing uh, players spawn with. As well as all that sometimes Rocket, you know, uh, Dean Hall, gets inspired and adds new stuff to the game just because. For example, the stack instruction based logic sorter and the stack instruction for fabricators that are currently being tested on beta, which are now normal for everybody. All these updates are part of it. The hygiene, starting conditions and coming soon, new suits, jetpack, are, as well as food. All those parts together with some tweaking as we go along, I think will get the survival loop to a really good place. New suits got put uh, on the back burner. We are still trying to figure out what we want to do with each one and what suit based gameplay we want to change or improve. Yeah, so the su new suits will be coming, but not very soon. What the heck does Planet Craft have to do with anything? What? What? How did this end up on my screen? Well, there's a terraforming mod for Stationeers, and um, the developers are actually thinking about uh, creating an expansion for terraforming. Let's read. I propose to the team we do a terraforming expansion which would be a whole offshoot of the game and price about the same as the main game, but allow terraforming. Our rough plan currently includes us, in future, making a whole expansion that would be terraforming, uh, though nothing is concrete on that yet. We initially had that idea and dismissed it. However, the popularity of the terraforming mod shows how wrong we were. Hopefully, in doing such a thing, it means we add more options for modders, including the terraforming mod itself, to make cool stuff too. Let's read a bit about the terraforming mod, which is available. It's a binary mod, though, so we need the Bepinex, and this might then often be incompatible or might kill your save games when, as the as uh, Stationeers releases new updates. Terraforming enables the ability to change your world, cleanse your world, or pollute it in. Uh, polluted into a hellscape. The gas in your atmosphere is finite. Anything you take from it will be gone and anything you dump into it will stay. The temperature will react accordingly and with dedication and careful planning you can turn Europa hot or Venus cold. The temperature of your world is controlled by a temperature model that may takes uh, multiple factors into account, but the factors you'll be able to change is the gas composition. Pollutant is a strong greenhouse gas. CO2 and volatiles are mild greenhouse gases. Nitrogen and nitrous oxide have cooling effect. Volatiles will increase your day-night different differential temperature. A thick atmosphere will, will reduce your day-night differential temperature. Temperature model work of solar irradiance. This means temperature fluctuates with seasons. Very noticeable on Vulcan. All planets can be made into a livable environment at least part of the day, but some planets are easier than others. Your planet has a maximum pressure it can sustain, defined by the gravity factor. Only if you reach this limit will gas start to completely disappear. Your planet has a maximum pressure it can sustain, defined by the gravity factor. Only if you reach this limit will gas start to completely disappear. Please 
note, the world atmosphere total volume is very large, but it's nowhere near realistic in so many ways. This is intended as an endgame project and to give more purpose to building megabases. I have tried to put it at a size that would make a, a megabase designed to process gas a minimum of 100 hours of effective chugging to complete a terraforming project. 100 hours of the game calculating on the atmosphere to, to completely change the planet into whatever you have set out to turn it into. But this is hard for one busy man to test and confirm. So if you find it taking blah, 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 and so forth. So, uh, yeah, that's not necessarily ahead, but they have plans to do such a thing. They are just not hard plans, but they would like to do it. Uh, so someday on Discord, when we were discussing potential missions and tasks to do, because currently all we're doing is we're living with the emergent simulation, I said, would be cool if we'd have, if we'd, have to make kind of a hotel in which guests would dwell you know this would mean that we would have to make the room survivable with beds with lighting maybe some automatism the right atmosphere temperature maybe adjustable who knows that also have uh, so um, the guests that would also have to move from their room to the outdoors and vanish like sims going to work so that path shouldn't be too long. All would be evaluated depending on survivability, apparent safety, comfort, and maybe even luxury. That's a lofty fantasy, of course, but it would fit well with the game. So traders needing their atmospheric needs satisfied would be a first step in that direction, a prototype of that situation, quasi. I'm saying uh, we currently have that already. We could expand that to a hotel-like thing. And then Dean said, uh, which wasn't even the discussion to that point, I think, he said, uh, this is the goal, in quotation marks, beyond trading. We want to extend it to like to little activities, missions, run a hospital, hotel, babysit some researchers, etc. Uh, Mikovic said, that sounds cool, kind of like Icarus, eh? Uh, Dean said, probably not quite to that level, and there's no confirmed time frame on it. We can assess after other stuff, but it's long been a goal for us post-traders. So there you have it. That's what the devs said. Interesting stuff, announcements, uh, yeah, things that will be coming, may be coming, or would be becoming. See